I'm going to go about using law of cosines to solve these three triangles. The first one, notice that I have a side length, the adjacent angle, then the adjacent side. So this is typically classified as side angle side. Uh, my strategy is going to be first to find side length a, so I'm going to write that form of the law of cosines, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine alpha. Okay, And I don't know a, but I do know b. I do know c. And of course I do know alpha. So, uh, a squared is going to equal all of this mess. This is the sort of place where a calculator is invaluable. Now you want to, before you, before you press enter, you'll want to make sure in mode, you're in degrees mode, okay, but once you're there, you can get out a value here, 12.441, and of course I'm going to take the square root of that, uh, so square root of answer, and I'll round that off to 3.5, 3.5. Okay, now that I have all three of the sides and I have this angle, you can use law of cosines again to get beta or gamma. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use law of sines just for variety's sake. I'm going to use law of sines to find the smallest angle. Well, why do I get the smallest angle? I like the smallest angle because I know it's opposite, actually I have the smallest angle, I'm going to find the second smallest angle. Uh, it's opposite the second smallest side. Uh, so let's see, what do I have here? I have sine beta over 4.5 equals, and here's the pair that I have, sine 23 degrees over 3.5. Okay, so that tells me that sine beta equals 4.5 times sine 23 degrees over 3.5. Okay, so you could calculate this number. I'll go ahead and say beta equals sine inverse of 4.5 sine of 23 degrees over 3.5. Now the reason I didn't choose the largest side length and the largest angle is sine inverse maxes out at 90 degrees. So by choosing one that isn't the largest, it can't be bigger than 90 degrees. So let's see, I'll take sine inverse of 4.5 times sine of 23 divided by 3.5, which gives me a beta of about 30 degrees. Okay, how am I going to get gamma? Well, my, my sort of preferred method to get gamma is 180 degrees minus 23 minus 30. So, that's 127 degrees and the triangle solved, okay? The next problem, notice that what I have is I have side side side. I have all the sides, I don't have any of the angles. So I'm going to use <coughs> law of cosines to get one of the angles. Uh, now you could use exactly the form of law of cosines that I used earlier. Just to show you a different form, I'll go ahead and use the form that starts with b squared. So b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of beta. The important thing is that this angle be opposite this side. Uh, so here I'll get beta to start with. Uh, b squared
squared. Uh, and I guess I have that side, so I'll go ahead and plug it in. Uh, let's see, so 3.8 squared equals 6.1. Oops, that's not A. Guess I should pay closer attention. 2.9 squared plus 6.1 squared minus 2 times 2.9 times 6.1 times the cosine of beta. Okay. Now I'm going to subtract these two quantities to the other side. So 3.8 squared minus 2.9 squared plus, oops, I've got to subtract it, minus 6.1 squared equals negative 2 times 2.9 times 6.1 cosine beta. Now I'm going to divide all of the things that are multiplied times cosine beta to the other side. Cosine beta. Some people will actually plug these into their calculator and approximate to start with. I'll use the calculator more or less just in one step. So negative 2 times 2.9 times 6.1. Okay, but what I want is beta. So I'm going to take beta equal to cosine inverse of this piece right here. 3.8 squared minus 2.9 squared minus 6.1 squared over negative 2 times 2.9 times 6.1. When I'm plugging this into the calculator, the thing that I want to make, be careful about is to make sure all of that's in the denominator. So cosine inverse of, here's my numerator, 3.8 squared minus 2.9 squared minus 6.1 squared. Close my denominator, divided by, just close my numerator, divided by negative 2 times 2.9 times 6.1. Now I'm going to close my cosine inverse and I get a beta of approximately 28 degrees. So this is approximately 28 degrees. Well now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my smallest side and I'm going to use the law of sines with this pair that I know. So sine of alpha over 2.9 equals sine of 28 degrees over 3.8. As above, that's sine of alpha equals 2.9 sine of 28 degrees over 3.8. So that means alpha equals sine inverse of 2.9 sine of 28 degrees divided by 3.8, okay? So, sine inverse of 2.9 times sine of 28 divided by 3.8 gives me an alpha of approximately 21 degrees. So alpha is approximately 21 degrees. Notice what would have happened if I would have solved for gamma. Now, I happen to know that gamma equals 180 minus 28 minus 21. Oops. Or 131 degrees. Sine inverse can't output 131. So, I wouldn't have gotten the right angle here had I used law of sines to find gamma because it's opposite the largest side. But I've solved that triangle, first using law of cosines, then using law of sines. Here I have one last piece. Now, uh, if you have your thinking cap on, there's something amiss with this, but let's just pretend naively that we're going to go through and we're going to solve this using the law of cosines. Hey, I've got side, side, side. Life is grand. Uh, we haven't used the gamma version, so let's use the gamma version of law of sines. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine gamma. Okay, so I have 17.2 squared equals 8 squared 
plus 4.5 squared minus 2 times 8 times 4.5 cosine gamma. I'm going to subtract those two things to the left side, then divide by that. I'm sort of putting those two steps together, so I'll end up right there. 17.2 squared minus 8 squared minus 4.5 squared divided by negative 2 times 8 times 4.5 equals cosine gamma. So that means I want cosine inverse of that piece there. Now, there's something amiss happening right here, and so I'm going to actually plug this number in and show you what happens here. Let's say that I plug in the quantity 17.2 squared minus 8 squared minus 4.5 squared divided by the quantity negative 2 times 8 times 4.5. Okay? Cool. That's, that's problematic. Something went wrong. Ah, can you see? So luckily we can go entry and I can actually go back up and I can fix that. Okay, that's a little more reasonable. But notice what happens here. This number is negative 2.9. Well, can cosine have an output of negative 2.9? Certainly not. Cosine's range is negative 1 to 1. And so if you took cosine inverse of that number, you would get a domain error or some sort of error. Why? Well, because there just isn't a gamma that will make this work. Well, why is that? Well, notice that 8 plus 4.5 is distinctly less than 17.2. So, uh, in reality, what you have here is if you were drawing this, you would have C here, and you've got these little short sides, um, A and B, and there's just no way that they can meet. And so, what you get is you get no triangle. And you can see that just by comparing the side lengths, but if you should come down using law of cosines and get something that gives no solution, that's what's happened.